Hi, everybody, and welcome to uh, our next AGL member webinar. Uh, this is Getting Started with AGL Using a Raspberry Pi, uh, and it's being presented by Leanna Navi from Consulco Group. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you will not be able to talk as an attendee. However, there is a chat button at the bottom of your screen, which feel free to introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, say hi to everybody. Um, there's also a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you can drop your questions in there throughout the talk, uh, Leon will answer some of them live at the end. You have the option to upvote. You have the option to um, co comment or answer any questions or add to as well. Uh, we also have Walt Miner, our AGL community manager, will also also help be, be will also be helping to answer any AGL related questions. Um, and so now with that, I will hand it over to Leon to kick off the presentation. Webinar about getting started with automotive brain Linux using Raspberry Pi. My name is Leona Navi and I'm a senior software engineer at Kunsoku Group. This is a services company specializing in embedded Linux and open source software. Kunsoku Group has experience in hardware and software build, design, development and training services. I have been contributing to automotive grade Linux since November 2015, which may Leon, we just lost your audio. Engineering presence worldwide. The agenda of the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes is a brief history of how AGO was ported to Raspberry Pi, exact steps how to build an AGO image and to boot it on Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. I will do a quick overview of some of AGO specific features and configurations for Raspberry Pi. Finally, we'll wrap it up with conclusions, questions and answers. During the summer, I delivered a similar talk at the AGO all members meeting. Now I have updated the slides um, and added some uh, new information as we have a little bit more time uh, in this webinar. Uh, Raspberry Pi is a series of uh, small single board computers developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, the first model of Raspberry Pi was available on, on the market in 2012. Uh, all models feature a Broadcom system on a chip and an ARM CPU. Raspberry Pi was designed primarily to promote teaching of base, basic computer science for kids, but actually it became super popular in the maker community for hobbyist projects and various demonstrations. Um, AGO supports Raspberry Pi uh, since release Brilliant Blowfish. Initially, AGO supported Raspberry Pi 2. At the moment, the supported platform, the, the recommended supported platform is Raspberry Pi 4, but you can also build an image for Raspberry Pi 3. A few words about automotive grade Linux. It's a project of the Linux Foundation. It's an open source GNU Linux automotive distribution with in vehicle infotainment. Nowadays, actually, AGO has uh, quite a lot more features than this. Um, AGO is based on the Yocto project and open embedded. And as a project, AGO started in 2014. Let's have a look at some of the milestones important for both AGL and Raspberry Pi. Everything started five years ago when Mauro Shanab, at that time working for Samsung Open Source Group, ported Tizen based on Yocto and Open Embedded to Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, after that, um, using a similar approach, um, Raspberry Pi was adopted as a hardware platform by Genevi, and shortly after that, I was the one who ported it to automotive grade Linux. At that time, the um, uh, modern version of Raspberry Pi was uh, Raspberry Pi version 2, so that's what we used. And uh, we had all these uh, three uh, distributions, Tizen, Genevi, and AGL running on Raspberry Pi 2. Um, over the years, we extended the support uh, for Raspberry Pi in AGL since 2016. Um, AGL runs on Raspberry Pi 3 and since uh, last year 2019 there is support for Raspberry Pi 4 uh, which can run both using the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch display uh, by the Raspberry Pi Foundation as well as HDMI monitor. Let's have a look at some of the AGL core technologies. 
Um, obviously, AGO is a Linux distribution, but it's a completely different uh, distribution compared to what we have on our uh, servers or laptops. Uh, of course, there is a Linux kernel, a bootloader or Linux kernel. Uh, in AGO, the security is very specific as it uh, relies on SMAC, Synagora and uh, the application framework. Um, AGO, uh, since the beginning, is based on System D. Pipewire is for the audio framework. Um, software over the year updates are done using OS3, which is a popular open source project actually nowadays, and Actualizer. Um, both of these tools um, are enabled using the AGO sort of feature and using them, you can um, perform updates of your um, AGO based devices, including Raspberry Pi. The graphical user stack is based on uh, Wayland with Western. There are uh, Qt and QML applications on top. Also, HTML5 applications are supported. A few words about the Yocto project because this is something uh, very important for AGO because AGO is using uh, the Yocto project and Open Embedded as a build framework. The Yocto project is an open source collaborative project of the Linux Foundation for creating um, custom Linux based systems for embedded devices using the Open Embedded build system. Open Embedded build system includes Bitbake and Open Embedded Core. Bitbake is the tool that you will be using if you want to build an AGO image uh, for any platform including Raspberry Pi from scratch. Pocky is a reference distribution of the, uh, the Yocto project. It provides some metadata without any binary files just to bootstrap your own distribution for embedded devices. And um, the Yocto project has the annual release cycle, which means that every six months there is a new uh, release. And the latest release uh, was done um, a month ago at the end of October 2020. Uh, there are many um, different layers um, in AGL. Here is a list of some of them. Uh, so we have Pocky. This is the reference distribution of the uh, Yocto project. As I mentioned, we have um, Meta AGL, uh, Meta AGL demo, extra, a cluster demo, and so on. Um, it's uh, common in the Yocto and Open Embedded ecosystem to have a prefix uh, meta of the layers. Uh, there are some specific board support package layers. For example, to support Raspberry Pi, we have Meta Raspberry Pi. Uh, for supporting indoor hardware, we have Meta Intel, Meta TI for Texas Instruments, Meta Renesas Aircar Generation 3 for Renesas Hardware, Meta SoundCloud, and many more. So if you want to port AGO to, uh, to a new uh, platform, you need to add a new BSP layer for this hardware platform. And of course, I have to say that Raspberry Pi is obviously uh, not an industrial or automotive grade hardware, but it's very convenient for demonstrations. Therefore, we're using uh, Meta Raspberry Pi as part of AGL to build AGL uh, and boot it on Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 for primarily demonstration purposes as well as debugging because nowadays Raspberry Pi is a commodity and pretty much any, uh, anyone uh, has a Raspberry Pi. Uh, let's have a look at the AGO releases. They are done uh, twice per year. Uh, releases are named on fishes. The latest stable release is Itzy iFish. This is version uh, 903. Next release is Jumping Jellyfish. Uh, it's based on Yocto Project release Dunfo. I have to say that Yocto Project release Dunfo uh, is uh, a long term support release of the Yocto Project. More details are available at the automotive grade. Uh, Linux uh, wiki. Um, uh, I have included uh, some some links here and here is a, a screenshot from the wiki uh, with the uh, current AGL sc uh, schedule as of uh, 17th of November 2020. Now let's build an image uh, for Raspberry Pi uh, starting from scratch. There are several steps that we have to do. AGL relies on a Google repo tool uh, there, because each of these uh, layers that we saw in the previous slide is actually uh, a separate Git repository. Therefore, what we're doing is that using the Google uh, repo tool, we're putting them all together and uh, we are able to manage all these uh, repositories. Uh, so the first thing is to install and to prepare the repo tool. Uh, these are the commands to do it. After you do this once, the next thing is to create a directory where we're going to build AGL. Let's call it AGL AirPi. 
Uh, then we're gonna uh, run the repo init uh, command. Uh, in, in this example, I'm uh, building the latest uh, Raspberry Pi version, the master version. This is convenient for development purposes. However, um, if you uh, want to do application development or um, some demonstrations, it's highly recommended uh, instead of using master to use a, a branch for a stable release. Uh, after uh, doing the repo init command, which will initialize a repo manifest, we need to run another command, repo sync, which will actually download all the source codes, um, the source uh, code files um, of the uh, Yocto uh, and open embedded layers uh, in the directory that we've created. So the next step is to set up the build environment. Uh, Raspberry Pi has a bunch of scripts to simplify uh, the setup of the environment. So here I would like to highlight a, a few things. So the first thing is the argument, which is Raspberry Pi 4. This is the machine name. Um, and uh, if you want to build AGO for another machine, you're gonna replace here Raspberry Pi with an, an, another option from the supported machines. However, this webinar is specifically focused on Raspberry Pi and I'm using Raspberry Pi 4 for um, all these exact steps and demonstrations. Furthermore, uh, we are including some uh, very basic AGO features, which are AGO demo and AGO application framework stack. Um, and after that, we are running the command bitbake AGO demo platform. AGO demo platform uh, is uh, the most common uh, demonstration image of AGO. Uh, bitbake will take care to go through all the recipes and uh, start first uh, fetching the, so the source code. And after fetching the source code, it will start building uh, uh, each package. The whole build from scratch takes a significant amount of time if you're doing it for first time because it has first to download the source code. This depends on your internet connection. After that, to build everything from scratch. Uh, so it will, it will take a while. Even if you have a very powerful machine and very good internet connection, it will still take a while. Um, this is only for the first uh, first build. After that, uh, you can reuse your uh, uh, shared state and uh, speed up uh, follow-up builds. Um, now, let's have a look uh, a little bit in more details of the uh, commands that I've explained you. Where you, When you are sourcing the environment, I, I, I showed you how we specified Raspberry Pi 4 as a machine configuration. There are other machines that you can choose. Uh, and of course, um, uh, you can choose also Raspberry Pi 3, which is also supported. However, it's recommended to use Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with um, uh, more uh, RAM memory. Uh, I would recommend at least four. Uh, there is also Raspberry Pi 4 version with eight gigabytes of uh, RAM memory, which is a good option. Uh, there, there is also a list of um, AGO features, which uh, the AGO setup script can help you. Uh, you can uh, choose from. Uh, you can run the AGO setup script with the H argument, and this will list all features with brief uh, information about them. Uh, short list here: AGO demo, AGO application framework, SMAC, uh, AGO SOTA. As I've uh, already mentioned uh, SOTA is, stands for Software Over the Air updates, and this uh, uh, triggers features in AGO with Oystery and Actualizer to perform. Uh, software over the year updates. There's also an option for network boot, uh, which is triggered with the AGO netboot, netboot feature. Uh, once you have the image done, the next step is to flash it on a micro SD card. Uh, Raspberry Pi boots from a, uh, um, from a micro SD card. Uh, so if Bitbake uh, finishes successfully, uh, you end up having this AGO demo platform wic.exit.z um, archive in the temporary directory of the images, you need to extract it, uh, to, um, extract it and flash it to a micro SD card. Uh, this is uh, done with actually um, these three, three lines. First, you need to unmount um, the micro SD card. After that, using uh, exetcat to um, extract the image and uh, simultaneously to flash it on a micro SD card, for example, using uh, the dd command. Finally, remember to type in sync and then um, eject the micro SD card from your build machine and insert it on the, in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, all you need to do to turn on the Raspberry Pi is to plug an appropriate uh, USB-C cable. If it's um, a Raspberry Pi 4, if you're building an older 
Moto uh, previous versions of Raspberry Pi were powered by a micro uh, USB. Uh, please keep in mind that the first boot of uh, AGL uh, takes a little bit longer because it performs some initial installations. Uh, so uh, monitor uh, the uh, updates on screen or using uh, the serial output if you have a UR to USB cable. Uh, so yeah, the first boot takes a little bit, little bit longer. Uh, each uh, boot after that is um, uh, significantly faster than the first boot. Uh, here is a list of the common AGO images. Uh, we built AGO demo platform. Other images available are AGO image IVI. Uh, this is a very basic uh, for IVI targets, uh, Invico infotainment targets. AGO cluster demo platform. This is the uh, demonstration image for the cluster. AGO image boot. Well, this is um, very minimal, just to, enough to boot image. Um, uh, uh, and um, AGO uh, image minimal is again a minimal file system image, but with APIs. AGO image western is uh, uh, AGO is like AGO image minimal, but it also adds uh, the graphical um, uh, user interface provided by Wayland and Western. This is Wayland is the graphical display protocol used in AGO, and Western is a reference compositor for Wayland. Um, if you are a Raspberry Pi owner, uh, it's highly recommended to buy a USB to UART cable. This will uh, help you. Uh, monitor the serial output while the Raspberry Pi boots and it's very convenient if there is a problem at uh, booting Raspberry Pi because if it fails to boot you get information whether it's a problem with the bootloader or the kernel or something else and for example in the initializing of the system the service. Uh, if you're doing AGL development um, based on my experience from time to time you might end up in a situation where you need to debug why you see just a dark screen and uh, the UART uh, to USB cable is your best friend at uh, this moment. Uh, so this is a screenshot taken from the AGO documentation side. Uh, it shows the um, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Moto A version and um, the three pins that you need to connect on um, the ground of the UART cable goes to pin 6 of the Raspberry Pi Rx of the cable goes to pin 8, which is uh, Tx, and Tx uh, of the cable goes to pin 10. Um, really convenient uh, thing to do. Uh, once you do this on your uh, personal computer, if you, are, um, if you are a Linux user, you can use um, a tool such as Screen to monitor the output. Uh, here is what you're going to see in the serial monitor or uh, directly on your HDMI monitor or official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display if you have successfully booted an AGO image. Um, the the uh, login is root without any password. Once you are booted, you can type in and run any commands. Uh, in the previous steps, uh, we built AGO demo platform image. So what you see here uh, on this slide is actually uh, what you see in the serial uh, command uh, if you if you boot this image, if you uh, if you have an HDMI monitor attached, uh, you see the uh, graphical user interface with Qt applications loading. Um, the serial bolt bolt rate for Raspberry Pi and AGO images is one one five zero two zero zero. This is an important configuration that you have to do if you want to get some serial output. Uh, here are a few screenshots of what you're going to see on a monitor if such is attached with the AGO demo, um, demo platform image. Uh, on the left is the, uh, the first screen with all the applications. After that, I've got a, a couple of screenshots. The first one is from the HVAC application. The second one is uh, a menu in the uh, settings applications, which show you um, general information about AGO and the image that we've built. Um, here is, um, here is uh, a systemd output of uh, Western. Um, as I explained, um, Wayland is the graphical display protocol used in AGO. Uh, Western is the reference compositor. And uh, here um, from the command line, I have um, checked if uh, Western is running. In my case, obviously, it was running because um, out of the box uh, with AGO. Um, 
demo platform image uh, Weston was loaded it was displayed on the screen as you have seen on the on this slide um, this is just a quick verification that everything uh, is fine and as you see that system D is reporting that uh, the Western service is active and it's running um, if you're porting um, if you're porting uh, AGO to a new hardware device uh, if you want to get uh, AGO running on a device that's not supported yet uh, you may need to go through the systemd logs of Western to make sure that uh, it's properly uh, running furthermore uh, also um, uh, in the case of Raspberry Pi here uh, you can see that uh, Western is also having its own log with more information this is the Western log file uh, and it's located in uh, run platform display supported Raspberry Pi peripherals in AGL uh, are um, the any HDMI monitor should work also the Raspberry Pi uh, official 7 inch touch screen display which is really convenient for demonstrations I love this display and um, there are some cases where you can stack the uh, the display and the Raspberry Pi on the back really nice and to carry it around if you need to travel with it um, also um, Raspberry Pi uh, has um, Raspberry Pi 3 and newer models as well as Raspberry Pi 0 W have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity AGO is uh, um, supporting uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 however for optimal performance uh, depending on the environment you might need uh, to use um, external Wi-Fi uh, USB dongle with um, um, stronger antenna to get a better Wi-Fi coverage also um, um, a various third-party add-on boards uh, which are also known as HATS hardware attached on top according to the specification of the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, those um, third-party add-on boards are supported uh, also in AGL uh, I have seen some demonstrations using um, AGL and Raspberry Pi uh, with um, canvas uh, add-on boards um, uh, if you had the chance to visit one of the rare events uh, that happened uh, physically this year uh, in Fosdem in Brussels there was this huge demonstration um, demo platform uh, with um, various hardware devices running on the AGO stand at Fosdem 2020 um, I was volunteer at this, um, this uh, stand it was a fantastic experience unfortunately due, due to the pandemic the next edition of Fosdem will be virtual but I still hope to see you there, there and I hope to see talks about AGO um, on Fosdem again um, let's have a look at the Yocto project releases as explained at the beginning of the presentation AGO heavily relies on the Yocto project and uh, open embedded uh, the Yocto project has a uh, uh, new release twice per year uh, here are uh, the uh, latest releases uh, Gathers Gort actually it was released uh, on October uh, it's now available and uh, Yocto project the, the uh, Dunfell is a long-term stable release it was uh, um, made available in April 2020 and uh, the latest and greatest release of AGO is going to be uh, is based on Dunfell if you're building AGO master you'll get it um, yeah as of today the the default XML file is already based on uh, uh, Yocto uh, release Dunfo so if you're building uh, if you're building uh, AGO master that's what you're gonna get a few words about Meta Raspberry Pi this is a general Yocto open embedded board support package layer for the Raspberry Pi boards it supports all of the Raspberry Pi's which are available on the market um, Meta Raspberry Pi depends on a few other layers uh, from Meta Open Embedded, uh, specifically Meta OE, Meta Multimedia, Meta Networking, and Meta Python. Uh, this means that uh, if you are building um, Yocto image with Meta Raspberry Pi, you need to add these layers to your bblayers.conf. However, in the case of, Ras of uh, AGL, uh, everything is simplified because the AGL. Uh, scripts for initializing the build environment take care of uh, providing you bb layers with all these um, bblayers.com file with all these layer already included there so uh, with AGO this works out of the box you shouldn't worry about it um, Meta Raspberry Pi also provides some specific uh, variables and knobs to enable or disable hardware specific features uh, for example to 
enable I squared C devices, you need to set a variable enable I squared C to one. Uh, also the same uh, for uh, SPI. Uh, if you want to switch from the default, uh, from the default Raspberry Pi bootloader to use U-boot, and this is what we do in AGO for the, for example, uh, we need this for the AGO SOTA feature. Uh, you need to use the AirPi use U-boot uh, variable. And um, uh, in the previous slides, I've explained in details about UART and why it's important. And in order to support out of the box UART with um, AGO demo platform image, we are using this enable UART variable. Uh, also something important for AGO, uh, VC4 DTBO must be set to VC4 fake MS V3D to support Wayland, Western and the applications on both HDMI monitors and the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen display. This is uh, very important to get everything working with the uh, official touchscreen display on Raspberry Pi 4. Um, new features and bug fixes are accepted to um, GitHub for specifically for Meta uh, Raspberry Pi. Meta Raspberry Pi is not AGO specific. We use Meta Raspberry Pi in AGO, but uh, it's a general purpose board support package layer for Raspberry Pi. So um, pretty much any other distribution based on Yocto and Open Embedded, which is running on Raspberry Pi, also uses Meta Raspberry Pi, so it's a quite uh, popular layer. The maintainer is Andre Gerzan, uh, but there are more than 90 contributors, and there is an excellent documentation which is available at the readthedocs.org slash project slash Meta Raspberry Pi. Um, so, uh, Meta Raspberry Pi in AGL, there is the script AGL setup, uh, which you already saw how it's working, and um, it uh, initializes the build environment with a proper uh, conf slash local.conf and conf slash bblayers.conf. These are the key files for configurations in uh, any build based on the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Uh, um, Yocto and Open Embedded layer meta AGO slash meta AGO BSP contains a sub layer with AGO hardware specific configuration. So basically, this layer extends what we have coming from Meta Raspberry Pi with some specific configurations for both AGO and Raspberry Pi. Uh, configurations from conf include AGO underscore Raspberry Pi 4.ink or the same for Raspberry Pi 3 are automatically included in your local.conf when you run the AGO setup script. Um, of course, um, whether it's going to be Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 depends on what machine do you specify when you run the AGO setup script. Um, now let's have a look at the key features of AGO on Raspberry Pi. The first thing is that uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, AGO uses U-Boot as a bootloader for Raspberry Pi. The GPU memory is set to uh, 256 megabytes. Um, GPU is never enough, uh, so it's um, uh, with uh, with Raspberry Pi, with all the Raspberry Pi models in AGO, we had uh, some problems due to, to lack of enough uh, memory. UART is enabled out of the box. Um, it, spe it includes specific kernel models uh, as well as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth firmware, which means that if you build AGO um, uh, demo platform image, as we did following the exact steps that I've shared, uh, you end up with an image that boots and has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled. Um, AGO is using command to manage the Wi-Fi connections. A few words about the firmware KMS. To support both HDMI monitors and the 7-inch official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display, AGO for Raspberry Pi uses firmware KMS instead of full KMS. Uh, it's small difference, but really important, huge impact. Um, and it, Took me a while to figure that out, thanks to help from some people from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, there is an appropriate uh, Linux kernel version, MESA with VC4 support and binary firmware uh, in uh, BCM2835 uh, boot files in order to get everything working. This is actually done, I'm just explaining you what's happening and how it's working. Um, and uh, the most important in, um, in uh, your setup which is done, of course, but uh, it was important to do it, was to set this variable vc4dtbo, uh, this is the device tree binary overlay for the firmware KMS. Uh, more details are available in AGO Jira, um, spec uh, 2465, 
AGO uses uh, Jira to track bugs and um, this will and an, as an open source project the whole communication is uh, public so in this uh, this um, uh, bug report you can find details uh, about the whole process how we what kind of problems we had and how we ended up solving them in order to enable firmware KMS and to have to have uh, Raspberry Pi 4 working with both HDMI monitors and the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display. A uh, few words about the software over the year updates. Uh, you need to trigger the AGO sort of feature uh, during the exact steps. I, uh, uh, in the previous slides, I didn't enable it because I wanted to boot a very simple image. However, if you want to give it a try, um, you need to run the same command with AGO Soda. Uh, it uses libos3, previously known as OS3, but um, uh, it's still popular as OS3 uh, among the community. And Actualizer, uh, OS3 provides, and uh, libos3 actually, provides a Git-like model for committing, downloading, and automatic the provisioning of bootable file system trees to a fleet of vehicles. The idea here is that instead of uh, doing AB updates, where you have a huge download, LibOS3 is that doing just a Delta update, which is more robust, smaller, and specifically convenient for uh, devices that move around and um, which need to be updated over the air because it keeps the uh, footprint of the update file smaller. Um, uh, we use uh, Yocto and Open Embedded Layers Meta Updater and Meta Updater Raspberry Pi to have um, support for SODA with these tools. More details are available uh, in the wiki as well as at, um, um, here the documentation. I'm particularly uh, interested in software over the year updates and I was uh, involved in the process of enabling um, LibOS3 and Actualizer in AGL. A few words about the tools that um, uh, uh, developers use while using AGL. Um, AGL is hosted in Git. We're using the, the Google uh, Repo tool. As actually, you've seen this in the exact steps. Uh, the Google Repo tool takes care of uh, keeping together all the Git files for the different uh, for the different Git repositories. Uh, we also have Garrett, which is a tool for uh, code reviews. Uh, certain bits uh, and pieces are also in GitHub, but primarily the documentation. Jira is used uh, for bug tracking as well as uh, uh, new feature requests. So if you find a bug, uh, please file it in Jira and um, someone will assign it to the appropriate developer to have a look at it and fix it. Also, the wiki is a great place to uh, put uh, community supported tutorials uh, and uh, hints how to use AGL. Also, there is uh, an official documentation which is available at docs at automotive. Linux.org. Also, AGL supports, um, uh, keeps uh, um, continuous integration with uh, Jenkins and uh, Lava Plus Fluego for running tests. Here is a screenshot of um, AGL Jira. Uh, so, this is how it works. You can see here uh, I've selected um, issues related to Raspberry Pi uh, 3 and 4. Uh, AGL is, uh, uh, is uh, using Jira since the beginning, and Jira is a very powerful tool which enables you to search through the issues and put uh, different filters. So, if you uh, spot a bug, the first thing that you should try is, uh, is to go to, to Jira um, and see if someone else has experienced the same bug, and if he he has not, please report a new bug. But if someone if someone else has already reported the bug, if someone is working on this bug, eventually you can um, step in and provide more details or uh, more feedback. Uh, so yeah, Jira is the first, the first thing to check if you come up with uh, any kind of a bug in AGL. Um, how to contribute to automotive grade Linux? Um, after reporting an issue, you can modify the source code, include a reference to the Jira issue in the git commit message, and uh, finally submit it to AGO Garrett uh, for someone to review it. If, uh, if the uh, change is okay, um, if you get uh, enough uh, positive votes in AGO Garrett, it's going to be merged by the maintainers. Here is how it works. Um, uh, so, in from uh, from your um, developer 
repository on your build machine, you are cloning uh, the AGL Git repository, you are making some changing and pushing them back to Garrett. After that, the reviewer will fetch them, uh, vote if, uh, if they're okay, and the maintainer will merge them uh, eventually if everything is okay. It looks um, a little bit complicated, but actually it's not, and Garrett's quite convenient too when you have uh, many people working on the same code base and when you need cold reviews. And uh, here uh, is an example. Uh, this is uh, an example based on a patch that is more than a year old, uh, but it's about uh, something that I've explained in this presentation about the firmware KMS. So um, this is a screenshot from uh, Garrett. And uh, here you can see uh, how we have bug-agl referencing the spec number from AGO Jira. So, Mm, this is what I mean, that first you need to report uh, the problem in uh, Jira and after that, either you or someone else, when there is a fix available, it should end up uh, with uh, this type of a commit message because it makes it easier in future to follow up and uh, see why and who has made the change. So, um, if you need some help, if you have some questions or recommendation, please join the AGL mailing list. Also, there is a weekly developer uh, call, which is happening each Tuesday. Walt Minor is leading it. And you can find us at the IRC channel Automotive on Freenode. I try to join it uh, pretty much uh, every day. So yeah, if you are still using IRC, and actually IRC is quite convenient for, especially for open source projects, come and say uh, hi to the Automotive. Um, channel in on free node. Um, so let's conclude this talk uh, with some important things that we need to mention. A Raspberry Pi is a community supported hardware platform uh, in terms of community supported in terms of AGL. Um, it is fully compatible with AGL and it's useful for getting started because most of people nowadays have a Raspberry Pi. It's also convenient for proof of concept demonstrations. However, Raspberry Pi is not an industrial or automotive grade um, hardware device. So uh, it's not recommended to put it uh, in a, a mission critical vehicle. It's definitely not recommended. However, it's recommended to use AGL with Raspberry Pi 4B or uh, with four or eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, of course, using this for, um, again, for uh, getting started uh, and uh, proof of concept demonstrations. Uh, the more RAM you have, the better in terms of uh, AGL. Uh, you can become part of the A automotive grade Linux community by contributing bug fixes, uh, new features, uh, by testing um, and providing feedback in the mailing list or updating the documentation. Automotive grade Linux is uh, um, uh, participating in both Google Summer of Code as well as uh, some are docs and there are people contributing uh, to, uh, to the project from all around the world. Some of them are making their first step in open source developments. Others are uh, senior engineers with many, many years of experience. Thank you very much for watching this webinar. I hope it was useful. And uh, here are some links uh, to follow up and I'll be happy to, to hear your questions. And before we uh, wrap up the slides, just to remind you that in the slides I've showed you how to build an image from scratch, but you can also use a pre-built binary image, which uh, is available um, as a link and it's listed uh, for all the supported um, uh, hardware platforms, including Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's available in the wiki. Thank you very much for watching this webinar. Please let me know if you have any questions. All right, thank you, Leon. And now we have some time for questions. Uh, Emily, thank you very much for organizing it. I hope uh, the information was useful. Uh, I saw that there was one question about, about uh, the slides and yes, they, they will be uh, posted. Uh, uh, tomorrow they will, be, they will be available. I also, uh, as I mentioned uh, during the presentation, I had a similar talk uh, during the uh, AGO all members meeting uh, during the summer. Uh, the slides were very similar. I've updated them, added some new things. 
uh, but you can also have a look at uh, the recording from the AGO all members meeting too. Great. Um, and while we, you know, just a cup for while we wait and see if anybody has any questions, um, just a reminder to everybody that Automotive Linux Summit and Open Source Summit Japan starts tomorrow or this evening, depending on where you are located in the world. Um, it's only $50 to register and um, there's going to be a lot of great content. It's all virtual and I will drop the link in the chat for um, anybody who's interested in registering. Um, and then we also have one more webinar coming up on December 16th, uh, and it's AGL at Sea, a marine grade Linux, which will be presented by Philippe LeFoul from IoT.bzh. Um. I guess a comment uh, in the chat from Roya. Um, he'd like to have more infos on to develop with AGL. So I would, this is Walt, the uh, community manager. So I'd say Leon slides, he gave a really good overview of a lot of the um, places you can go to get information on developing with AGL. He, so check out the uh, links in his slides for the documentation site, for the wiki page, uh, you know, how to, where to find pre-built binaries. Um, and if you, like, like Leon mentioned, if you have any questions at all, feel free to join the mailing list. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, really good information on the mailing list, and the groups.io page allows you to go and search the mail, you know, existing posts, or you can post a new message if you'd like as well. And I'll drop the link for the groups.io as well into the chat. And by the way, recently AGO documentation uh, got uh, even better because of the uh, Google season of documents. Uh, yes, we had some... a student from Google from uh, uh, India, uh, Boran, who did a lot of work in Google season of docs. And I think the doc site looks looks a lot better. The presentation is a lot better. And he went through and he updated a lot of the documentation. So I, yeah, he did a great job with that. Great. Uh, well, last call for any questions. Okay, okay. well, uh, thank you everybody for joining and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you virtually during Automotive Linux Summit. Thank you, Leon. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to be here with you.